Welcome to VFX Tech Talk with your host, Steve Wright. Steve is a master nuke trainer and VFX guru who brings you interviews from the movers and shakers from around the world of visual effects. Now here's Steve. Today we're talking to Timothy Gibbons, a senior VFX artist for ILM, about his new book, The Insider's Guide to Starting a Career in Visual Effects. Tim has been a visual effects artist for the last 15 years, and most recently at ILM, working on such blockbuster films as Battleship, Transformers, Star Trek, Iron Man, Pirates of the Caribbean, and many, many more. Tim had so often given advice to friends and colleagues about how to get started in visual effects that he decided to write it all down and share with everybody by publishing an ebook on Amazon.com. It's a great read, very inexpensive, and provides a wealth of hard-to-find information about how to get started in the exciting world of visual effects. Well, Steve, thank you. Um, it's great being able to chat with you today. And for the past 16 or so years, I've been working in visual effects in one capacity or another. I've done such jobs as, uh, as painting, rotoscope, uh, tracking, technical direction, and compositing. And so... Um, so through the years, I've kind of gotten to know all the various disciplines that kind of uh, contribute to the visual effects pipeline. And I've met a lot of people. And uh, it's always been kind of on my mind to kind of share, you know, with the community and uh, give back to other people that are um, entering the, the business and, and try to help people. So that's kind of where I come from and, and, uh, and what I'm interested in, too. So, Tim, you mentioned a lot of people um, asked you about getting started in the industry, and you've been helping a lot of people. So, is that why you wrote this book? It is. Actually, the, the kind of genesis of the book came um, after a friends and family screening at Industrial Light and Magic. And basically, every Friday at Industrial Light and Magic, they have this screening where you can invite your friends or family to come in. And watch a few trailers and watch kind of a behind the scenes on how, how ILM does visual effects and then give, you know, your friends or family a tour of the facility. And I had done this a number of times. And after doing it probably for, you know, the 10th time or the 11th time, I realized that it's just not enough to be able to give, you know, someone a, a you know, a one hour tour of a facility and, and show them kind of a breakdown reel and have them really understand um, how to get into the visual effects field if that's what they're interested in. So I kind of thought, well, maybe I should write a book on this. You know, I, it wouldn't be a, a difficult book to write because it's kind of the world that I live in. So I'm just trying to help people get to where I'm at. And I've gone through all those steps. And so I figured, you know, I'd start the book and see where it, it went to. And so uh, it, it was kind of a labor of love. And uh, I got in the store a couple of months ago, into the Amazon store a few months ago. And um, yeah, I'm just happy with the response from some of the people, some of the family and friends who have read it. So well, Outstanding. So bottom line, you were given this advice randomly to different people and you decided to scrape it all together into one pile and publish it so everybody could get it the first time correctly. Exactly. exactly. Outstanding. And it's available on Amazon.com. It's a Kindle book. That's right. Yeah, it's correct. And uh, I see the purchase price is $4.99. Uh-huh. Yep. Heck of a deal. Okay. Because there's, <laughs> well, there's a lot of aspiring artists out there who would just love to get this advice uh, about you know how to get into the industry. Okay? Yeah. The, the way I kind of came up with that price, I, I do think it's a pretty good bargain because basically it's kind of what I would have told you over lunch. If, if you were meeting me for the first time over lunch and you were saying, hey, I'm a friend of your uncle's and I really want to get into visual effects, you know, lunch would probably cost 10 or 12 bucks, you know, if you, if you wanted to, you know, hear me talk about this. So instead of me going through like 20 or 30 different lunches and saying the same thing over and over again, you can just pay $5 and you know, <laughs> and get the message that way. Well, so. you, you can also be some guy in Detroit that wants to know about it. Very true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't you don't have to you don't have to uh, walk up to Tim, tap him on the shoulder, and say, "Hey, Tim." <laughs> Someone in India actually bought the book. Yeah, you can see a breakdown of who bought the book on Amazon. I was really pleased that uh, yeah, there was a guy in India that bought. So that that was pretty cool. Oh, so the Amazon sales gives you uh, statistics. It does, yeah. It gives you country, country breakdowns on things, too. Oh, that, that's Real cool. Real neat reports. All right. Well, let's get into the meat of your book. 
Chapter 1 says, what does being a VFX artist entail? So give us a short description of what, what is entailed in being a VFX artist. Well, I think, I think the main thing that I wanted to get across in that chapter is, are you, are you prepared for what the job is? Which is basically to say, I think a lot of people who, who come up to me and want to work on movies have a, have a preconceived notion of what it's going to be like. You know, you're going to meet the stars and you're going to, you know, be, you know, hobnobbing with the directors and you're going to be working these cush hours and you're going to be working in Hollywood. And you're going to, you're going to be a pampered superstar of the, of the movie industry, but that's not true. Yeah. They kind of associate <laughs> with, uh, with all the jobs in Hollywood and not all the jobs are like that. And, right. uh, and so for the most part, for the most part, most people who are working on movies, in the post-production process, you know, after the movie's pretty much been shot and they're working in visual effects at that point, after the fact, before the movie comes out, those sort of people are working um, really well be behind the scenes. So they're working in, in cubicle farms, um, you know, behind, you know, two monitors, um, kind of slaving away 12 hours a day, uh, you know, with... Um, very tight deadlines and uh but no no pressure though right <laughs> <laughs> pressure and so you wanted to be sure in your first chapter that the artist knew what he was getting into yeah yeah you know i wanted to just kind of lay out some of the realities of the job you know and mm -hmm. that it's not all you know roses there are a lot of stress factors that go into the job and stuff like that just kind of mentally prepare people for you know, it looks fun to do, but when you have to do iteration after iteration after iteration, sometimes it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. So just preparing right. people for what it would be like. Gotcha. And you, of course, you warned them about the long hours. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. So this is, this is, this is not a job for people who want to have a family life. <laughs> 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 okay. So what did, what did you find? And you were talking to people, uh, telling them, your advice before you printed the book, what were some of the biggest misconceptions that you heard from people that were asking you? Oh, that's a great question. I'd say probably 90% of the people who I talked to didn't really understand the pipeline of visual effects, which is to say, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions was someone would say, oh, you're all animators. You know, you're all doing animation, right? Or, you know, even even when we were working on a film, or I worked on a film called Rango, which was an animated movie, but there's kind of this preconception or this misconception, I'm sorry, about what all the roles are and what people are doing, and they kind of lump all the all the visual effects artists into this animator uh, category, and they think that the animators are doing just about everything, whereas it's really a little bit more complicated than that. And so in the book, I try to also kind of lay out a basic visual effects pipeline workflow mm -hmm. to understand the different positions that go into it, into making, you know, visual effects. So Outstanding. That's a big thing. So, so that the, the reader would develop a sense of what the different jobs and roles were in that pipeline and where they might best fit in. Exactly, exactly. And, and that was the big thing. People would, when you start to talk to people about, look, you know, if you think you're, you're really a left brain person, you know, then, and, and you have a lot of math and, and science background, there's, there's a place for you in visual effects. If you think if you're kind of more of a right brain person and you're more of a artistic person, that's not as good with, you know, maybe computers or something like that, there's still a place for you. You might be a great concept artist within it. So I think that that's been something that's been very eye opening to people when I talk to them, like, you know what, there is a big gamut of skills that the industry looks for. And just kind of depending upon your interest levels and what your um, and what your strengths are, you might be able to contribute, you might be able to find your role. That was one of the things I really loved about your book is you tried to help the reader understand how to fit his natural skills into an appropriate place in that pipeline. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and part of that process too is is just kind of experimenting with what you like to do. And I think a lot of people who kind of say, "I want to do this," or they, you know, they they have an idea in their head. It's one thing until they they start to try it. So they might they might even be surprised at what they're good at. So I kind of try to encourage people in the book 
okay, here's something that you think you're good at. Try it. If you're good at, great. You might be able to go down that path. But there's so many other things. There's so many other um, roles available um, in, in uh, visual effects that you might find something else that that uh that you know might you know hit your fancy you know true you, there, i mean you, it, it's a spectrum from the hard left of pure math and science and being a td writing sims for water and and uh particle backscattering models right. to yeah. the hard right of pure artsy fartsy and i just sit in front of photoshop and make concept drawings all day yeah 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 exactly and yeah. and everything in between everything in between and yeah you you even have people who you know, I try to also kind of cover, um, you know, it's very easy to get very artist centric in these books. And so I also try to cover to a degree that there are a lot of production uh, positions available and other types of um, behind the scenes positions where if you weren't interested in art or you weren't interested in computers, if you're a very organized person and you, you have something to offer, there, there's other ways to get involved in the industry. So I tried to tried to lay that out too. Right. You were talking about being a production assistant or a production coordinator or an assistant visual effects uh, producer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as you say, there's a bunch of support tasks. Yes, exactly. Uh, at Cineside, we had guys that had actually started off as in production support, you know, and they were the guys who went and got the coffee and, and cleaned up the uh, conference room. But then they, they taught themselves, they learned the culture, they learned the workflow, and they started becoming roto artists, and then they become cleanup artists, and then they became compositors. That's a great point. That, that is a super point. The, the thing that's interesting, too, is that there's so many people that start out as one thing, and they finish their careers as an artist, or they find themselves midway through their careers in a totally different position. And also, they might start out in one city <laughs> and find themselves in a completely different city a few years later. So. Or, or country. Or country, right? Okay. It's very, very dynamic industry. <laughs> yes. uh, I was talking to Bob Coleman, who finds jobs. He's actually an agent for uh, for artists, or, and uh, I was doing an interview with him, and he said, "You need a resume and a passport." <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. We can find something for you. Yeah. Right. Right. I think so, I think that's true. I think a lot of it also is is putting yourself out there right so there are there are a lot of ways to kind of network with people it's kind of exciting right now there's all kinds of new ways to network with people and stuff like that and once once you kind of meet people and talk to people you can kind of find out where you might be able to fit and stuff like that so yeah i agree with this point once you know once you kind of have some basic stuff they can find a role for you if there's there's a lot of work to go around well and another another thing i really liked about your book is you gave some really solid tips about how to get a job. Yes. Would you like to do just a short, brief recap of some of the highlights of that part? Because I think that's what our listeners would really be interested in. Definitely. I mean, we, you know, I see so many people come in and, and go and stuff like that in the industry. And basically what I've kind of noticed is that the first thing that happens, for example, from from within the company, when someone applies for a visual effects position, right? They'll send in their resume and they'll send in their demo. Room. And what happens is you have to be very careful for how everything works, right? So mm -hmm. you want your uh, you want your demo reel to basically be under three minutes. You want it to have your absolute best work. You don't want to put anything on there that would at all question your ability to do something. And so it's very important that you put your best foot forward with that. A lot of people know that. But the next step that's very interesting that I've always found very interesting is that whoever is doing the hiring will look at the resume and say, okay, where's this person worked or who does this person know? And they will definitely go through your references. So if a friend of mine who's outside the company has applied to the company, chances are whoever's hiring will come to me almost immediately after looking at the demo reel and go, what do you think of this person? You think this person uh, is good under stress? Do you think this, you know, has this person done a lot of high quality projects that you're aware of? What, you know, what, what's the deal with this person? And that weighs very, very, very heavily on the hiring process. Well, now you bring up a real important point. You're saying, and I think a lot of people in the past have tried to spoof their resumes. And so now <laughs> the, the companies are now very rigorous at checking your credentials. Yes, yes. So don't try to fool them, you're saying. 
No, you, you shouldn't. And you should also be nice to everyone that you work with. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have seriously seen many people been blacklisted just, and they've had great demo reels. They've had mm-hmm. great experience. They've, they've worked on great movies and they're talented artists. And, and when, you know, when they basically, when someone asks around and says, have you worked with this person before? And that person says, you know, I did, but it wasn't a great experience. Okay. So we need to be a good team player. Yeah. Being a team player is huge and and being smart about it, you know, now, what does that mean? Well, it means kind of keeping in touch with people you've worked with and keeping things on a good. I mean, if you go to any of the, if, if you are working in the industry, I mean, it's always good if you're going to any of these uh, mixers or, you know, VS awards or wherever you might go, SIGGRAPH, uh, to basically, you know, just keep things warm with people, you know? <laughs> well, so, okay. So your advice is yeah. can keep your networks up and stay in touch with people Yes, and be nice to them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really underrated, but it. Goes- uh, well, well the, the one I heard was be nice to people on the way up because you'll meet them again on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> but your advice is actually more uh, more poignant in that if when people when when the company that's looking to hire you asks around about you, one of the things they'll find out is you're a real jerk or whatever. Definitely, definitely, and you know. This it also extends to people who haven't worked in the industry. So let's say you're trying to work at a certain company. You want to break in. You want to break in, and you've been taking classes somewhere. Okay. Let's say you've taken classes at I'm just throwing out a name, Academy of Art. Um, it pays to kind of be nice to your classmates, be nice to your teacher, get a good rapport with your teacher because that's going to be a great reference. And also, if any of your fellow classmates have gone on to this company they're going to be the first people who are asked about you. So you, you have to be aware of that, and you have to kind of keep that in mind. And this is not because there's petty politics in our business. This is a pragmatic issue because we work very tightly as a team in a closed yeah. environment under tight schedules with a lot of pressure, kind of like submarine warfare in World War II, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's built on a lot of trust, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. It definitely is. So that definitely comes into play. And also, I think that um, hiring managers, too, a lot of the reels, I hate to say it, but a lot of the reels are of a certain quality where it's hard to say, how do we how do we choose from this from reel A versus reel B? They're both great, you know, and really kind of the deciding factor is how is this person to work with? You know, oh, so that could be a tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, OK. Well, that's it. That's interesting to know. Okay, Timothy, so to summarize, what would be the single most important advice you would give to aspiring artists that are trying to break in? Oh, wow. Well, I think probably the biggest thing now, nowadays, that the advantage that someone who's trying to break in today versus what where I was at 15 or 16 years ago is that I think there's great online classes and you don't have to spend you know, uh, $10,000 a year or $20,000 a year going to a college only to find out, Ooh, I'm not sure this was right for me. I think you can make, you can, you can come up with a pretty good idea of what you like to do and what you're good at. Maybe by spending $200 or $300 on classes that are online. So my, my advice to people, if they're interested in getting into visual effects, would be to kind of explore. There's certain websites. VFXIO has some great stuff on it. FXPHD has great stuff on it. And Digital Tutors. Just kind of sample some of those classes and see what you like and try to go through all the coursework in those classes. And I think you'll be head and shoulders uh, way further than I was when I was starting out because I really wasn't exposed to the full gamut of what is in visual effects until I got into a company. Right. But now as you can experience it outside of a company from your own laptop. So you're, what you're saying is the shape of the uh, industry terrain today is you can get tremendous training online and figure out what it is you're good at and what you like doing without signing up for an expensive college. Exactly. I think the the online training has gotten of such high quality and so much of it the years. It's just it's amazing. It's mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. It's better than 
it's better than in-house training at many companies. Absolutely. The other the other thing is, um, you know, you go to one of these uh, universities and, and you're getting also a lot of stuff that doesn't pertain to visual effects. True. Very true. Okay. So you're yeah. paying for those classes and spending that time. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. And also, depending on the institute, there is um, some of the instructors on these institutes are surprisingly unqualified. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> I would, you know, I, you know, I'd go out of my way to recommend, it sounds a little bit weird, but if you wanted to be an animator, for example, there's a website called Animation Mentor. And the instructors on that website are fantastic. Wow. I mean, they're all industry veterans. They're mm -hmm. great. And that's just one example. But the quality level of some of the online offerings, if you do your homework, you can find some people with some incredible industry experience, some incredible um, knowledge to pass along, and uh, you can do a lot better than you can do at some of the traditional brick and mortar schools, actually. So it, it's kind of exciting. It allows sometimes it allows people who are still in the business, you know, who are working, let's say, in in uh, in Hollywood, to communicate with people who are you know across the world in Macedonia, you know. So it, right. it's really exciting, really cool stuff. Funny you should mention Macedonia. I went there two times to uh, teach visual effects compositing <laughs> some years ago in Macedonia. Industry there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I helped uh, get them set up. So that, that's a coincidence. That's quite a coincidence. Okay. Well, cannot thank you enough for your time, Tim. Okay, everybody, I'd like to thank Tim Gibbons for talking to us today. His book is called The Insider's Guide to Starting a Career in Visual Effects. You can get it on Amazon.com's Kindle for only $4.99. So buy it for your aspiring artist today. It's a great read. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for your time and your insights. Thank you so much, Steve. I had, it was a total pleasure. I had a great time. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Remember to follow Steve on Twitter at NukeGuru and to friend him on Facebook. To learn more about Steve, visit his personal website at swdfx.com or his training website at vfxio.com. Sign up for our newsletter to get his op-eds, interviews, and class schedule information direct to your inbox. Until next time, cheers!